message that we're being sent. Oh, you little people, you, you vaccine injected little GMO consuming miscreant sheeple people, you all are expendable. Don't prepare, don't have any food in your pantry. Don't read books that teach you basic preparedness. No, you're all expendable, but the government, oh my God, the government has to survive the continuity of government because of course, this government is so wonderful, such a wonderful gift to the world. We have to keep it alive as is, no changes, no reforms, <laughs> keep it alive as is. Uh, well, you can tell where their priorities are. Now, I'm not against all government, by the way. There is obviously a place for, for some, some level of certainly local government. And, uh, you know, I agree with Ron Paul. Hey, cut it, cut at least a trillion dollars out right now, slash the government by, I don't know, 80, 90%, bring it down within reason to where it serves the people once again, instead of demanding obedience from the people. That would be a good situation. There's also information, if you notice this new show on National Geographic about preppers, and in this show, they sort of, they show these, the most extreme preppers, and then they make fun of them. They say, well, this person built a giant underground bunker. And my God, that's so ridiculous, they say. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, obviously. It's so ridiculous because there's only a 0.2% chance of that solar flare happening or, you know, a nuclear war happening or whatever. So these people are crazy for preparing. Well, there's a less percent chance of catching the flu, and yet they push flu vaccines every single day. Go get a flu shot. And they tell you that the shot's going to prevent the flu. No, it, it actually doesn't. Vitamin D prevents it much better than, than the flu shot. Although, hey, I might take some flack about that comment from our upcoming guest, Dr. Sheldon Marks. <laughs> we'll find out. I'll ask him on the air. But the government says, you know, be afraid of the flu. But don't be afraid of economic collapse because that's never going to happen. I think they've got their priorities wrong. I think economic collapse is a lot more treacherous and a lot more likely than catching the flu, especially if you take care of your health with some basic nutritional information. Now, we're joined now for the rest of this hour by Dr. Sheldon Marks. He is a urologist and a microsurgeon. He specializes in vasectomy reversals. His website is dadsagain.com. You know, if you want to be a dad again and get that vasectomy reversed, uh, he's the guy who can do it for you. Now, he is a member, of, a board member of the Tucson Police Foundation. He's one of the founding members. I was one of the early members, a board member of that foundation as well. That's where I met Dr. Marks and came to really like the guy, respect his opinions on many things. And he's got a lot of great medical knowledge and emergency medicine information that he's going to share with us today. So, Dr. Marks, are you with us? I am here. Ah, okay, great. Great to hear your voice are you joining us with a voice only or Skype video too? I'm on the video as well. Oh, I see you now. There you go. Okay, awesome. Great. Uh, great great to hear your voice today. So, what do you think about preparedness, Dr. Marks? Where do we need to begin? Uh, uh, we probably should have begun a decade ago. Uh, I think what we need to do is when we're talking about preparedness from a medical point of view, you need to start with something that you're an expert in, and that's prevention. I think that Obviously, people want to take good care of themselves before the crisis occurs. It doesn't make any sense to be obese and not exercise and smoke and think that when the crisis happens, then suddenly I'm going to be in shape and take care of things. So obviously, you want to get those things in order first. Uh, you want to take care of anything that needs to be addressed ahead of time. So preventative dentistry, for example, go to the dentist and, and I tell all these people, make sure you get your teeth cleaned and you're on top of that stuff because when the crisis occurs or when you don't have access to these things is not the time to start dealing with the abscesses and the root canals and those situations. You know, but it's just not cool to talk about, you know, we're going to prepare. We want to go out and, you know, buy some ammo and uh, get your teeth cleaned. You know, people don't normally right, talk it, about yeah, that. Right. It doesn't have the excitement of, of, of getting your MP5 or loading up. <laughs> uh, weapon systems. But if anything, it's probably more important because if you don't have your health, then the rest of that becomes worthless. Well, that's a good point. And where are you going to get insulin in a collapsed scenario if you're type 2 diabetic and you need insulin? Where are you going to get that? Right. Nowhere. Right. Uh, and so, also, you mentioned obesity. I mean, you, you might have to do more physical work. You might have to work your garden. You might have to carry gear around. How are you going to do that if you're not in better shape, right? Absolutely. So it's, first thing first is 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 
look at, at your own situation and not just yourself, but look at your family, look at your kids, your spouse, your parents, who are you going to be involved with? Who's part of your little community and, and talk to them about health. And so it's part of it is obviously nutrition, diet, exercise, uh, mental health, uh, avoiding bad habits. The tobacco alcohol thing is obviously bad, but it's, it's also doing preventative things like going to see the dentist. If you're old enough, 45 or 50, then you should be getting your colonoscopy. As exciting as that sounds. Uh, well, you're, you're not making our show sound exciting, Sheldon. Uh, well, I apologize. But well, <laughs> you're freaking out. I know. Well, all these, you know, all these. And, 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 it's, 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 it's those kinds of simple little easy things. Part of, I guess, when you talk about is once you've gotten past that, then if you're starting to look at from a medical point of view, what are you going to do? The question is, what are you preparing for? Uh, and, and obviously, like you had talked earlier about, is there's the common things to worry about that are most likely, and then there's the rare and more devastating things that people want to talk about, and that's the stuff that gets the headlines and gets everyone excited. Right. You need to take into account all of those things. You need to think through what are our needs as a family and neighbors, and then what do we do so that we can take care of ourselves? And you know, you're not going to be able to buy a book and go out and do uh, hip reconstructive surgery or <laughs> the appendectomies. I mean, it's, it's even when you know what you're doing, simple things can become nightmares just because of the, the magic of the way the body is designed. All but right, what let's, you can't let's, do, go ahead. Let's talk about the medical kits. Though. A lot of people go out and they buy these medical kits or these first aid kits, and it says it's got 500 pieces in it, and, you know, 490 of those pieces are bandages. Yeah. Right. What's your take on these medical kits? Well, I, I love Band-Aids. I think they're the greatest thing. But what you have to do is when you buy a kit, first thing you do is you open it up and you have to look at what's in it and decide what's relevant to you. What do you know how to use? What do you not know how to use? So if it's got SAM splints in there, which is something everybody should have, if it's got SAM splints, then you definitely want to learn how to use them and when to use them and when not to use them. Um, if it's got uh, over-the-counter medications in there, you want to learn what they're for, what they're not for, when to avoid using them. And so you have to go through each of the different content pieces and identify what is best for you, what is relevant for your needs, because probably it's going to be mostly Band-Aids and gauze and cheap things. And then decide where are the gaps and then go to your local pharmacy or go online and start filling in the gaps with those extra things you're going to need based on what you anticipate your problems may be. Is there a source that you know of that you might recommend that where people can get, I don't know, full-blown medical kits? The Yeah, there's a few of them. And off the top of my I'm just blocking on it. I think... Uh, um, well, we, you can well, think about it during the break. Wilderness, we'll talk the about it after the break. These are wilderness medicine based kits because there you truly are in an, in an austere environment. You don't have any other uh, resources available. And so the concept is if you're out in the wilderness or you're a hunter or you're hiking or you're just out there and something happens, it's those wilderness medical kits. But I'll have that answer for you after the break. Okay, that's good. We are headed to a break shortly here. And we're being uh, joined by Dr. Sheldon Marks here. We'll continue with him after the break. And your calls on emergency medicine. We've got callers in the queue. We'll get to your calls here shortly as we continue right here on The Alex Jones Show. Thanks for joining us. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Okay, we're continuing our interview with Dr. Sheldon Marks. He's a microsurgeon, a urologist, an author, and also an expert in emergency medical preparedness. He continues with us in this short segment and also after the break. And he is, well, he, he performs vasectomy reversals, I think five days a week, something along those lines, at dadsagain.com is a website. And I was just thinking, Dr. Marks, during the break, you know, uh, you're, you're an expert in sort of delicately handling the delicates of lots of men. You should teach the TSA to be a little more gentle. They're down there playing rock'em, sock'em robots with everybody's uh, stuff. That's, that's not cool. No, especially if you've just had reconstructive surgery down there. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. What do, you, what do you think about the TSA and all, all their business getting in our business? You know, that's, that's that, I, I, I don't know. I get so confused because, you know, I think that clearly we want to maintain our rights. But on the other hand, uh, I, I, the, the bad guys, unfortunately, seem to get all the privileges and we're the ones that get punished. I, I think that with 9-11, <laughs> yeah. from what I understood, the problem was that it wasn't so much people getting on the planes with things, but stuff that had been pre-placed. In fact, I spoke once to a flight attendant 
whose plane was grounded on 9-11 before any passengers were allowed on. And she found a bunch of knives and blades already pre-positioned on the plane, obviously by the tarmac workers. So wow. everyone's so excited. I, I think the problem is we become very reactive. We wait for something to happen. So the shoe bomber, suddenly we're looking at shoes. The underwear bomber, suddenly we're looking at underwear. We're not thinking ahead. We're not trying to think what these people are going to do and how they're going to do it. I think that, yes, screening the little old ladies to some degree is important to some point, but I think the tarmac workers are the ones that come and go and, and they should be screened. And I have no idea what's happening with those people. Well, the, I know this is not what I invited you on here to talk about, but just, right. you know, the shoe bomber was put on there by government operatives. The underwear bomber was put on there by high level operatives. I mean, this, this is not an accident, uh, not a coincidence, but anyway, let's get back to uh, medical issues here. Right. You know, uh, I, I do want to take some calls. Are you okay to take some calls right sure, now? Sure, I'd love to. Okay. Well, let's... The, while you're doing that, it's Adventure Medical Kits. Those oh, are professional sure. kits designed for medical professionals to take with them. They have small little ones all the way up to elaborate ones, but they're, they're designed so that if I want to go out and be the physician accompanying a, a wilderness trip up a mountain or on a river, that's where I go to buy my kits to support what I'm going to be doing. Very, very cool. I also know there's a, a couple out there named Dr. Bones and Nurse Amy, and their website, I believe, is doomandbloom.net, and they make medical kits that combine Western medicine and a little bit of holistic, like herbal based salves and things like that for skin, you know, skin healing, things like that. So that's something else to check out. But adventure medical Absolutely. kits. And what's really important is when you get a kit, Look through it, and and remember, just owning it doesn't mean you're going to have it. Uh, if you if you're not careful with it, then the rodents will get into it. You want to make sure that it's moisture proof because humidity will destroy everything. So depending on where you live, you want to secure it, and you also want to twice a year at a minimum check on it, make sure it is ready to go. Uh, in addition to the home kit, you're probably going to want to have a travel kit, something in your vehicle, and then a little bitty pack that you can have with you if you do have to grab and go, kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. Very good points there, Dr. Marks. Let's go to our caller, John in Pennsylvania. You're on the air. Go ahead. How you doing today? Doing great, man. Okay. Now, I have a question for the doctor, but before I get started, I wanted to make an alert or something known. Uh, we have a gentleman who was on the Daily Paul on February the 7th. He's a Ron Paul supporter. He's also well, hopefully going to be the next Ron Paul He's running for Congress in the Pennsylvania 9th. His name is Travis Schooley. He has a Facebook page. And uh, I just wanted to get that out there. Hopefully some people can send him some cash. If everybody right. Tra in Travis Schooley, how do you spell his last name? S-C-H-O-O-L-E-Y. Okay, just like it sounds. Travis Schooley, yeah. interesting candidate. Uh, go ahead. Do you have a question for Dr. Marks? Uh, he's a great guy from what I understand. I just found out about him. Uh, he needs a lot of organization now. No, I, I, I hear you, man. I hear you. All but right. we've got I, Dr. Marks as a guest right now. Do you, you have a question for him? I have a very complicated question. <laughs> Uh-oh. My son is an epileptic, okay? He had a stroke before he was born. I'm uh, basically prepared for about every scenario that that last guy talked about. But this, is there some type of natural source of anti uh yeah, Anti-seizure medication, yeah. maybe? Yes. Uh, he's on Depakote. Okay, he takes a sprinkle of that. Okay, we, we, got your, we got your question, John. Thanks for calling in. We were, we're about to go to break, but Dr. Marks, if you would, think about that question during the break and answer it on the other side. Uh, sounds like that. interested in some getting his hands on some anti-seizure medication for his kid. So uh, that's a very reasonable question. 